The clock is ticking as the FCC's proposed fee for amateur radio licenses has been published in the Federal Register. Keep watching for what this means to you in the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content and an early ad-free experience to videos. Help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash KB9VBR antennas. Well, it happened. The FCC has published their final change in the Federal Register concerning the license application fee for the amateur radio service. The rule was published on March 19, 2021, with an effective date of April 19, 2021, but at this time, there is no official starting date to collect the fees. As reported in the ARRL's VE newsletter, the fee changes outlined in this order will not take effect until the requisite notice has been provided to Congress, the FCC's information technology systems and internal procedures have been updated, and the Commission publishes notices in the Federal Register announcing the effective date. This most likely will be in the summer. So we have a little bit of time before the fees are actually collected, but what does this mean for amateur radio operators and prospective hams? The big change is that the FCC will begin collecting a $35 fee for every new license application, renewal, upgrade or modification, and vanity call sign application. The fees will be paid directly to the FCC via the License Manager System or Fee Filer System. VE or volunteer examiner teams administering a license exam will not collect the $35 fee, but will continue to collect the $15 testing fee. Administrative updates like address changes, name changes, or email updates will not be imposed in application fee. So where does this fee come from and where does it go? Well, for over 30 years, the FCC maintained a fee schedule adopted by Congress. The, passage, the recent passage of Ray Baum's Act requires the Commission to establish fees for all applications filed with the Commission based on the cost to process such application. So these fees are the result of a need to meet statutory requirements. The fees are calculated based on staff time and compensation due to their direct labor costs of processing applications. Basically, the FCC calculated the base cost of an application fee of $35. The application fees collected will return to the federal government's general fund to offset the FCC's annual budget. No, they won't be used for enforcement or earmarked for any other types of activities, but instead go back into the general fund. You may argue that amateur license applications are a highly automated process, and you are correct. The Commission acknowledges that in their rulemaking and state, we find there are some direct labor costs incurred for a portion of these applications, and we therefore conclude the adoption of a fee to account for these costs is appropriate. The $35 cost-based fee we adopt for mostly automated applications assumes that a relatively small number of these applications require staff direct labor. The FCC also writes, with respect to the amateur licenses, while review is highly automated, staff must maintain the processing systems to ensure applicants are qualified, vanity call sign procedures are followed, and offline applications are individually reviewed. Therefore, we cannot conclude that there are no costs involved in processing the applications, and we do not have the discretion to exempt this service from application fees. So all personal licenses such as amateur radio, GMRS, general operator license, maritime marine, and others you know, fall under this base level $35 application fee. Another argument mentioned in the rulemaking is that numerous commenters suggest that amateur radio licenses should be exempted or are exempt under Section 8 sub D paragraph 1 of the Act, as, as is Ray Baum's Act. Uh, we, the Commission disagrees and notes as a starting point that the Commission has no authority to create an exemption where no exemption has previously exists. It must be contained within the wordings of 8 sub D paragraph 1 of Act 45. None of the listed exemptions apply to, the, to exempt amateur radio service licenses. 
If the amateur radio service wishes for an exemption to the application fee, Congress would need to amend the Ray Bombs Act to include the exemption as no exemption currently exists. It's important to note that the collection of these fees is authorized through federal law, but the amount is calculated by the FCC. The Commission did what they could to impose a minimal fee based on the actual cost of processing an application. It's also important to note that the fee will not be collected until the FCC's information technology systems and internal procedures have been updated. And the Commission publishes such notices in the Federal Register announcing the effective date. So it's estimated that this most likely won't happen until this sometime this summer. But the time will come soon enough. If you're thinking of getting a license upgrade, do it now to avoid the fee. Also, if you're thinking of getting your amateur radio license, you know, there's no better time than the present. Amateur radio licenses are good for 10 years, so you wouldn't have to pay the fee for, a, for almost a decade when you renew. And finally, I get that the fee may be a barrier for some, especially if you're young or on a fixed income. But with the fee amount at about the same cost as a Baofeng handheld, it isn't an over overwhelming cost in the grand scheme of amateur radio. Well, do you have any questions or comments about the upcoming FCC license fees? Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through the comments and I'll follow up with them. Who knows, you know, maybe yours will end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information and VHF, UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Support us on Patreon to help keep the mission alive. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your best way to be notified when a new video is released. That's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.